Hello, welcome to our channel, Listen Sense, where we share creative writings such as stories, poetry, and prose. Here we try to behave as a resource for the many of us that enjoy literature of all kinds. Each video will have a transcription of each piece as well as a link to more of their work in the description box below. We will upload on a twice a week schedule of Wednesdays and Saturdays, and you may see bonus content in between. I'd like to take a moment to appreciate you for viewing our very first video. We try to find pieces that share similar themes or feelings for each video. The theme of today's video is love, specifically the more positive aspects of romantic love. We will start with Daydreams by Dorothy Parker. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you enjoy. We'd build a little bungalow if you and I were one, and carefully we'd plan it so we'd get the morning sun. I'd rise each day at rosy dawn and bustle gaily down. In evenings cool, we'd spray the lawn when you came back from town. A little cookbook I should buy, your dishes I'd prepare, and though they came out black and dry, I know you wouldn't care. How valiantly I'd strive to learn, assured you'd not complain. And if my finger I should burn, you'd kiss away the pain. I'd buy a little scrubbing brush and beautify the floors. I'd warble gaily as a thrush about my little chores. But though I'd cook and sew and scrub, a higher life I'd find. I'd join a little women's club and cultivate my mind. If you and I were one, my dear, a model life we'd lead. We'd travel on from year to year at no increase of speed. Ah, dear to me, the vision of the things that we should do. And so I think it best, my love, to string along as two. This next piece is also by Dorothy Parker. It's called Ballad at 35. This no song of an ingenue. This no ballad of innocence, this the rhyme of a lady who followed ever her natural bents, this a solo of sapience, this a shanty of sophistry, this the sum of experiments, I loved them until they loved me. Decked in garments of sable hue, daubed with ashes of myriad lights, wearing shower bouquets of rue, walk I ever in penitence. Oft I roam as my heart repents through God's acre of memory, marking stones in my reverence. I loved them until they loved me. Pictures pass me in long review Marching columns of dead events. I was tender and often true, ever a prey to coincidence. Always knew I the consequence, always saw what the end would be. We're as nature has made us, hence, I loved them until they loved me. Princes. Never I'd give offense. Won't you think of me 
tenderly. Here's my strength and my weakness, gents. I love them until they love me. This next piece, pardon my pronunciation, is called Fete Galante by Mark Antonio Flaminio. It was originally written in Italian, and I will be reading the English translation. I hope you enjoy. The morning star flies from the clouds, and the bird cries to the dawn. Amaryllis awake. Lead your snowy sheep to pasture, while the cold grass glitters with white dew. Today, I will pasture my goats in a shady valley, for later it will be very hot. Among those distant hills lies a very great valley, cut by a fair stream. Here there are cold rills and soft pasture, and the kind wind engenders many colored flowers. Dear, there I shall be alone. And if you love me, you will come alone also. This next piece is called How Do I Love Thee? Sonnet 43 by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. I hope you enjoy. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee for the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight for the ends being an ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need, my sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee the passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life, and if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. This next piece is called Brown Boy to Brown Girl by County Cullen. As surely as I hold your hand in mine, as surely as your crinkled hair belies the enamored sun, pretending that he dies while still he loiters in its glossy shine. As surely as I break the slender line that spider linked us with. In no least wise am I uncertain that these alien skies do not our whole life measure and confine. No less, once in a land of scarlet suns and brooding winds, before the hurricane bore down upon us, long before this pain, We found a place where quiet water runs. I held your hand this way upon a hill and felt my heart forbear, my pulse grow still. This next piece, also by County Cullen, is called The Dance of Love. All night we danced upon our windy hill, your dress a cloud of tangled midnight hair. And love was much too much for me to wear my beads. The killer roared above his kill, but you danced on. And when some star would spill its red and white upon your whirling hair, I sensed a hidden beauty in the air. Though you danced on, my heart and I stood still. But suddenly, a bit of morning crept along your trembling sides, 
ebony. I saw the tears in your tired wounds and rough, and how your breasts heaved high, how languidly your dark arms moved. I drew you close to me. We flung ourselves upon our hills and slept. This next piece is called A Limestorm Song by Robert Frost. I hope you enjoy. The limestorm clouds fly tattered and swift. The road is forlorn all day. Where a myriad snowy quartz stones lift and the hoof prints vanish away. The roadside flowers too wet for the bee, expend their bloom in vain. Come over the hills and far with me, and be my love in the rain. The birds have less to say for themselves in the wood world's torn despair than now these numberless years the elves, although they are no less there. All song of the woods is crushed like some wild, easily shattered rose. Come be my love in the wet woods, come, where the bows ring when it blows. There is the gale to urge behind, and brute are singing down, and the shallow waters a flutter with wind from which to gather your gown. What matter if we go clear to the west and come not through dry shod? The wilding brooch shall wet your breast, the rain fresh goldenrod. Oh, never this whelming east wind swells, but it seems like the seas return to the ancient lands where it left the shells before the age of the fern. And it seems like the time when after doubt our love came back the main. Oh, come forth into the storm and rout and be my love in the rain. And for our final piece, this one is called On Love by Khalil Gibran. And I hope you enjoy. Then said Almitra, Speak to us of love. And he raised his head and looked upon the people, and there fell a stillness upon them. And with a great voice he said, When love beckons to you, follow him, though his ways are hard and steep. And when his wings enfold you, yield to him. Though the sword hidden among his pinions may wound you. And when he speaks to you, believe in him. Though his voice may shatter your dreams as the north wind lays waste the garden. For even as love crowns you, so shall he crucify you. Even as he is for your growth, so is he for your pruning. Even as he ascends to your height and caresses your tenderest branches that quiver in the sun, so shall he descend to your roots and shake them in their clinging to the earth. Like sheaves of corn, he will gather you on to himself. He threshes you to make you naked. He sifts you to free you from your husks. He grinds you to whiteness. He kneads you until you are pliant. And then he assigns you to his sacred fire so that you may become sacred bread for God's sacred feast. All these things shall love do unto you that you may know the secrets of your heart, and in that knowledge become a fragment of life's heart. But if in your heart 
he would only seek love's peace and love's pleasure. Then it is better for you that you cover your nakedness and pass out of love's threshing floor into this seasonless world where you shall laugh, but not all of your laughter, and weep, but not all of your tears. Love gives not but itself and takes not but from itself. Love possesses, not nor would it be possessed, for love is sufficient unto love. When you love, you should not say, God is in my heart, but rather, I am in the heart of God. And think not you can direct the course of love, for love, if it finds you worthy, directs your course. Love has no other desire but to fulfill itself. But if you love and must, needs have desires, let these be your desires. To melt and be like a running brook that sings its melody to the night. To know the pain of too much tenderness. To be wounded by your own understanding of love. And to bleed willingly and joyfully. To wake at dawn with a winged heart and give thanks for another day of loving. To rest at the noon hour and meditate love's ecstasy. To return home at eventide with gratitude. And then to sleep with a prayer for the beloved in your heart and a song of praise upon your lips. Thank you again for joining us today. I'd like to finish up by bringing attention to the fact that the pool of writing we choose from are from public domain. Thus, they may be used freely. If you'd like to support us, feel free to like and also subscribe to our channel. If you'd like, please comment down below and let us know what your favorite piece from today was. It would help a lot. Goodbye for now and we hope to see you next time.